Welcome to another video. This video is going to demonstrate how to do my painting a mood project. So the goals of this project are to learn how to communicate a specific mood through style and color. You're also going to learn how to invent a harmonious color scheme. So let's get into it. First up, let's talk about what you're going to need for this project. The materials you'll need are one 11 by 14 inch canvas panel, acrylic paints, brushes, a water cup, palette, palette knife, and you're going to need to get a reference photo of plants, pencil and eraser. Step one. Start by photographing any type of plant or flower you can find outside. You may want to do black and white photos since you'll be inventing the color scheme. So the original photo's colors may be distracting. So as you can see here in my example on the right, I went to the Fullerton Arboretum and took a bunch of photos. This is one that I found that I really liked of these sunflowers. Now the colors in the photo are beautiful, but I'm going to create my own color scheme. So Using this reference, I would probably just reference it as a black and white photo instead of color. But in terms of where to go to get photo references, it's totally up to you depending on what type of plants you're interested to draw. If you happen to have some interesting plants outside your home or at a nearby park or at an arboretum or something like that, um, you can be creative about where you go and it can be any kind of plants, trees, flowers, vines, anything like that. Step two. So you're going to print your photo out to use as a reference for your painting. Now there's a couple different ways that you can use it as a reference. If you feel comfortable to draw freehand from referencing the photo, then you can sketch your image with a pencil on your 11 by 14 inch canvas panel. If that's too advanced for you and if you're not comfortable with drawing freehand and let's say for example you want uh, you know a real kind of more literal translation from your photo to your canvas you can use a uh, transfer paper. So as you can see on the left there's an example of one of the brands that creates transfer paper and the way that you use it is you take a piece of transfer paper, place it face down on your canvas, put your reference photo on top, keep it steady, and use a pen or pencil to trace over the outlines of the forms. The pressure from your pen or pencil will um, create graphite lines because the transfer paper just has a layer of graphite on it. So it's going to basically give you your pencil lines directly onto your canvas. Remember to keep things simple. You do not have to include fine details or background information unless you want to. The image does not have to be exact from the photo. The photo reference is merely there for inspiration for the shapes of the elements you're going to include. So just take from it whatever you need. Moving on to step three. So you are going to choose a color scheme and style that supports the mood you want to communicate through your painting. Um, so I gave a list to help guide you and give you some options here. And I will show you examples of each one of these artists' works so you can get an idea of what their style is. But whichever one you choose, I highly recommend that you do your own research on the artist to see more examples of what their art looks like. So here's the artist that we are going to choose from. Van Gogh, Claude Monet, Bridget Riley, Vasily Kandinsky, and Agnes Lawrence Pelton. I'll show examples in just a moment. So you're going to choose a style, but you're also going to choose a mood. And this will help guide you with what type of colors, because we want to choose a harmonious color scheme, but we also want to choose colors that express 
whatever mood or feeling that you want to communicate because visual art is a communication tool. So we want to be thoughtful about how we are creating the painting. So here's just a, a general list of some different moods that you could choose from. Melancholy, sad, angry, intense, chaotic, happy, upbeat, balanced, peaceful, soothing, mysterious, dreamy, cute, silly, or funny. Let's take a look at um, examples from these different artists so you can get an idea of what type of style you're interested to replicate in your painting. Here is an example from Vincent van Gogh, who is one of the most famous artists from art history. He's known for some very famous paintings like Starry Night. And here you can see that his style is a bit more of a thick, opaque application of paint with little short brush strokes. So it has a very active feel to it. It feels like there's motion. It feels like there's something happening in the painting. Next up is Claude Monet, who is a famous artist for painting water lilies. And you can see here one of his famous paintings uh, where he uses more of a softer uh, application of paint with a brush, almost kind of like a blurry, blobby kind of a application with the paint. It's very loose and very dreamy and uh, definitely a little softer than what we saw from Van Gogh. Next up is Bridget Riley, who is a famous op art artist. Um, her paintings include very hard edge geometric shapes and vibrant colors. Um, she did a lot of paintings that uh, used um, very thin vertical stripes. Uh, so she's known for that, but she, she has a variety of different abstract paintings like this. So this would be like flat, opaque, hard edge, geometric, abstract. Here's an example of work from Vasily Kandinsky, who was inspired by jazz music. And you can really see it here with the movement throughout the composition. We've got a variety of both soft edges and hard edges some areas that look more blended and transparent, some areas look more opaque and uh, solid. Um, so using a variety of abstract shapes and forms to create a, a very kind of uh, smooth but energetic, um, almost kind of like a, a melody. Um, a very nice flow throughout the composition and a nice variety. We also get some repeated shapes, which helps provide unity. Um, I'm definitely noticing in this one some primary colors, red, yellow, blue, are really popping out to me uh, in the center of the composition. And we have here an example from Agnes Lawrence Pelton. She was known for creating very soft, transparent, dreamy, illuminated looking uh, abstract paintings that feel very ethereal and dreamlike. And oftentimes the forms look like they're uh, softly glowing and um, just really beautiful work uh, with these abstract forms forms and lots of gradients, lots, lots of soft edges and very long organic flowing shapes. All right, so once you choose a style and research that artist, then you're going to choose a color scheme. Now, how do you choose a harmonious color scheme? Well, you can consider choosing 
a, a color scheme category. Now I do another lecture about color theory where I introduce these different types. So we've got monochromatic, which mostly uses one color. We've got analogous, which would be colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. We've got complementary, which uses colors that are opposite from each other on the color wheel. Split complementary is very similar to complementary. It's just a little bit more complex. And then we've got triadic, which is three colors that have equal distance from each other on the color wheel. Um, now you also want to think about, okay, so you're choosing a mood to express what colors fit that mood, right? Um, now, if you need some inspiration uh, and if you need some ideas, here's a couple suggestions. If you're on Instagram, check out colorpalette.cinema or film and color. Uh, on the left, you can see some examples of what these accounts show. They actually take scenes from movies and show you the color scheme underneath the screenshot. Um, so that can be uh, very helpful um, for choosing a color scheme. You can just basically look through these color schemes and choose one that already exists. And um, it also kind of helps to see these colors together to determine, okay, what kind of feeling do I get from this color scheme? Like for me, on the upper left-hand corner with all the warm tones, the yellows, to me it's a very kind of warm, positive feeling. On the upper right, we've got this really electric palette with really bright blues and, and pinks, and it feels very much like a nightclub, or it feels like there's energy there. But um, you know, maybe it, it's it's maybe there's some action or movement that's supposed to be happening in the scene. And then on the bottom, we have lots of red tones with a little bit of green in the background, so that would be a complementary color scheme. And red is the most intense color you can use. So if you're trying to portray intensity, anger, danger, or even romance, um, red is a great choice for those types of moods. Um, another option to help you choose a color scheme is using one of these two tools. Uh, there is a free app called Color Harmonizer. Color Harmonizer basically has the options of all those different categories, monochromatic, analogous, complementary, and so on and so forth, that you can select and pick a certain color you're interested to use, and it automatically shows you what other colors could go with that color depending on what type of color scheme you're choosing. So that's really helpful. And Pretty much the same type of tool if you don't want to use an app and if you just want to go on a computer to follow that link for this free tool from Adobe, uh, it's same sort of idea as that Color Harmonizer app. So either one can be very fun to play around with and helpful for, for creating a harmonious color scheme. So again, think about what colors could support the mood you wish to convey through your work. Let's take a look at some student examples. So these are students of mine that have completed this project in the past. And I'm gonna show you what their inspiration was. So the mood for this one was balanced. And so I think it's smart of this student to use complementary color scheme of orange and blue for this idea of balance. I really love the pointillism uh, effect of the dots in this one uh, and the kind of gradient that looks like we've got a little bit of glow in that background is really interesting. Um, so color scheme is complementary and the style was fashioned after Vasily Kandinsky. Next up we have a joyful energetic mood using the style of Van Gogh with the short, strong brush strokes. And we have a triadic color scheme here with our primary colors, red, yellow, blue. So as you can see, the style, it shows a lot of activity. 
that bright saturated yellow really um, communicates that joyful feeling, energy. Um, triadic color schemes oftentimes are used in uh, children's animated movies. And so it definitely, we definitely associate these kinds of uh, color schemes with happiness, joy, stuff like that. Next example is a peaceful, dreamy mood. As you can see, um, the artist is using tinted versions of the triadic color scheme because we've got our primary colors, red, blue, yellow, but white has been added to all of them to create this pastel look, which is a very soft look, which goes along with the idea of peaceful or dreamy. And as you can see, the artist is inspired by Agnes Pelton. Remember, Agnes Pelton was known for those very kind of illuminated, soft, gradient, dreamy, um, thin application of transparent paint, uh, sort of a style. So I think the artist did a great job replicating her style. Uh, here we have a totally different type of look, it's also inspired by Agnes Pelton because, again, Agnes Pelton was known for this kind of illuminated look with the paint. And here we get more of a mysterious mood um, with a monochromatic color scheme because we get this kind of grayish, greenish blue color. Wide range of value here, and it almost looks like these. Um, cactus plants are floating in water and we're getting water ripples and then in the background we get this illumination of the moonlight really beautiful and peaceful and mysterious next up the student chose a melancholy and sad mood for her painting because she uh, chose a subject matter of a funeral wreath. So um, I thought that this turned out really beautiful. Uh, this student was inspired by the Claude Monet's style of just sort of the soft, um, you know, kind of like dabbing the paint on the canvas sort of paint application. Um, so it sort of looks almost kind of like blurry. Um, and she used a split complementary color scheme. Here we get a really interesting one from this student who created the whole painting just using the palette knife instead of brushes. So you see a really thick application of paint that looks very textured and dry. Um, and that kind of goes along with the mood that the student chose, which is more of an angry, chaotic mood. So we get that intensity with the paint application, but also the color. So this is a monochromatic color scheme using red and very high contrast as well because we get really dark darks as it gets towards black and really bright light as it gets towards white. So we have a wide range of value for that um, high contrast, that intensity, uh, I think really came across uh, through this painting. Now, they started out being inspired by Van Gogh, and even though the paint application here is not exactly what Van Gogh does, I think it did lead to an interesting result here because they started with Van Gogh, this idea of a thicker paint application, but then really got experimental with trying uh, the palette knife application. And I think we got a really unique, interesting result. Okay, our next example here. The mood is bold and intense. We've got a split complementary color scheme. And the style, style was inspired by Bridget Riley with those kind of more hard edge, bold shapes in the background. Um, although we do almost have an Agnes Pelton, uh, Claude Monet crossover with that flower because the flower has this pointillism effect with this gradient that almost looks like the flower is glowing light from within. Um, really beautiful work here and I think that the warm tones in the flower really pop forward in an effective way against the cool colors in the background. 
All right, let's take a look at my examples for this project. I've done a few demonstrations here. The first one, you can see how I started with that photo reference of a potted cactus. I love this cactus. This is one of my, uh, this is one from my own collection. It's called a dragon bones cactus. And uh, it's really got an interesting structure and shape to it. Um, now, I decided I wanted to go for a cute theme. So I wanted something kind of like fun and joyful for the mood. Um, I ended up with a split complementary and my style inspiration was Van Gogh. So you can really see how I'm trying to get those little short brush strokes to replicate his style. All right, the next one is more of a mysterious mood. I chose Agnes Pelton as my inspiration for style. Uh, and I went with complementary colors here. You can see I started with the reference photo of the sunflowers. And I, I took it very loosely, okay? So I basically just took that idea of the three sunflowers next to a pathway. And I simplified the forms and I created this very kind of eerie, mysterious sort of um, flowers that are glowing. Um, so this looks like, you know, dusk or twilight where the, the sun has gone down and it's not quite pitch black out yet. There's a little light in the sky, but we're walking down this path and, and there's just this illumination from these plants. I thought would be very kind of like otherworldly and kind of uh, supernatural and and just kind of calm and spooky and mysterious. All right, and my last example here is an example of being inspired by Vasily Kandinsky for this painting. Uh, I wanted to go for a soothing kind of a mood. A little different than the mood that I got from my original reference photo because the original reference photo I took uh, at dusk. Um, these these trees were near uh, a, a jacuzzi, <laughs> so the the light from the jacuzzi was glowing on these trees and is really beautiful. But um, I feel like my reference photo was a little bit more spooky. But I kind of wanted more of a soothing, airy light. Kind of a look in my painting so as you can see i went a totally different direction with color and value in my painting but i was inspired by those forms that i saw with the branches and the leaves from my reference photo and then on top i added some line work and geometric shapes because that's what vasily kandinsky would do and i'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process of how I did that painting. Um, but just keep in mind, everyone's process will be a little bit different depending on which mood and style you choose. For example, Van Gogh's style uses more of a thick application of paint, while Agnes Pelton uses thin blended layers. Experiment as much as you want with the paint. Acrylic dries fast, so you can always paint over areas if you needed all right so what i did here was i started with a loose graphite drawing so again the way you get your drawing down is up to you you can either be very loose and draw freehand like what i did or if you want to be more particular and specific you can use the transfer paper to get your line work down in pencil Now, because I was replicating Vasily Kandinsky's style, I noticed that in his paintings, it kind of looks like the first layers are sort of more thin and blended in the background. And then as he ad adds elements on top, they get a little bit more solid. So I started out in the same way. Another thing I like about adding thin layers here is that I can paint right over my line work and still see my drawing. So I went very watered down with the paint on these first layers and I just used some 
neutral colors, some very light, soft, neutral colors in the background. And I was already thinking about those geometric shapes. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do them. I happened to have some, some thin tape. So I tried taping off a few areas just to see how that would look. Um, so we'll see later what I ended up doing instead. But uh, the next thing I did was uh, kind of adjusted the colors. I really wanted something soft and light in the background. And I went just a little bit darker for the branches. And then I was planning to go even darker for the leaves. So we'll see the next layer here. I added some green and greenish blue colors for the foliage. Trying to replicate the basic shapes of what I saw from my reference photo, but it doesn't have to be exact. Whatever works for you and however you want to change it to make it expressive and unique. Uh, it, you know, this is a very experimental project. It's very open to, um, you know, playing around with the paint and seeing what happens, being creative and loose with it. Now here I was really experimenting with some tape. I basically taped off an area that I was planning to create a geometric shape with and I used a dry brush with some light blue paint and I just dabbed and smeared and scrubbed the paint into the surface to do a really thin soft layer of paint. Um, I also decided to use micron pens to create the line work. So I used a ruler and micron pens and for that circle I just found um, something circular to trace. Uh, of course, you can use circle templates for this, but if you don't have circle templates, just look around your home for something that already has a perfect circle shape, like, for example, a little pill bottle. Maybe you have a shot glass or maybe you have a small plate. Anything that you can find that could work as a little template to trace if you're creating circles. And I took off the tape and was uh, pleasantly surprised to see this really nice crisp edge. That's exactly what I wanted for this one. I added some organic lines with the black uh, micron pen as well because I saw that Vasily Kandinsky used uh, both organic and mechanical lines in his work. And um, I just wanted to try that out in mine. And I feel like I got a pretty interesting flow to the composition with these lines. I was really, um, really enjoying the look of Vesely Kandinsky's paintings that really do feel inspired by jazz music. So I'd highly recommend if you're going to use Vesely Kandinsky as an inspiration, maybe listen to some jazz music while you're painting and it will inspire um, the composition and the movement of the forms through the composition. So uh, this is my finished piece. You know, this is, I feel like this painting, I probably could have spent forever on it. I, there's always things that I was thinking I could add or finesse or perfect, but I got to a certain point with it where I just really liked it as is, and I didn't want to overwork it. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I hope you enjoy this project and I'll see you in the next video.